If you thought the police bias was bad, the media reporting of the riots was almost satirical. I mean, this this shows how they reported on other uh, other riots. So the Leeds riots a couple couple of weeks ago, three weeks mm -hmm. ago. Um, it was an ethnic riot. It was yep. Roma, also you know the Muslim, Muslim, Muslim community. Uh, they flipped police cars, torch buses. It was covered in the Guardian as we're all in it together. How unrest in Leeds escalated and was diffused, as if like the community had come together to rescue a boy who was stuck down a well. Yeah, but I love it. We're all in it together. Look at the picture. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I believe you. I hope I'm not in that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Be I, dead. Well, well, no, I believe they're all in it together. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not doing that. And according to another paper, if we scroll down the, uh, actually the, the down one more, um, according to Prospect, um, <laughs> the, the rioting in Leeds was the language of the unheard. I mean, if we're going to talk about the language wasn't of the unheard. It, wasn't it like a Roma family were accused of abusing their kids? Uh, so yeah, their kids were taken into care because yeah. of an incident involving one of the, their other kids. I think, I don't know if it was accidental or what. But uh, yeah, basically it was because the state had come in to protect yeah. the children. Whereas obviously the riots that we just saw across the UK were because three children weren't kept kept safe by the state. Three children died and other children were, were injured. And I think people on the left don't understand that this is a really abhorrent crime. I think a lot of people on the left... <laughs> the, left the people on the left, they hear child abuse and they say, what's the problem? No, they rationalise away. I paid my TV licence. They rationalise away <laughs> things like this. No, they I agree, they I agree. say, you know, oh, well, this yeah. is uh, like the, the stuff in Israel, but they say, well, it's, it's decolonialism. You yeah. know, it's de we're decolonising. What do you think it meant? Vibes, and papers? And so the, the actual physical violence can be can be rationalised away. And a lot of people on the left don't have children. They don't understand that children are really, like, they're, they're special and they're full of joy and they're really well, innocent the, and trusting. And so, they're the centre of your world when you're dad yeah, I, I yeah. Really so we've got to as a society we absolutely have to to protect them and i think you know when those three girls were killed it, it was somehow worse even than the ariana grande uh bombing because uh that was indiscriminate with this one it's very specific he's going from from child to child really uh really horrific and i think a lot of people something just switched and then they said no this this can't this can't go on whatever it takes we've got to keep children in britain safe uh, whereas a lot of people on the left are like, well, um, you know, this is just the acceptable price to pay for a, a multicultural yeah. society. I don't know. I don't think it is. And if we look at the 2011 riots, um, which resulted in huge destruction and several deaths, so, you know, substantially uh, more violent than the ones we've just seen, uh, the coverage in The Guardian minimizes any thuggery, excuses the riots as catalyzed by, by, by a killing. But the killing of a criminal... The killing of who's apparently armed and on his way to commit a, a violent crime. Uh, so the police had to step in and, and stop him. He was, he was under surveillance. No, there's a few re times that the police actually do something useful. Well, well the Guardian's yeah. position, I would assume, is that he, they should have let him murder those people because that's multiculturalism. That's just what you've got to expect. It's a natural disaster. They yeah. basically yeah. prevented a natural disaster that should have been allowed. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. And the BLM protests, look how they were covered in the, the BBC. If we, I think if we scroll up on that, if we go back, and scroll up. Uh, so the BBC said 27 police officers injured during largely peaceful anti racism protests in London. So 27 police officers injured during largely peaceful. It's this. It's literally fiery, but mostly peaceful protests. Yeah, the dissonance involved in that, <clears throat> yeah. that statement. Um, I mean, look, the picture is all the guy with the bat, or, you know, what he's, oh, yeah. he's in the middle of hitting. It's like largely peaceful, folks. Yeah. It's yeah, like, can yeah. they not find a better photo for yeah. it? Yeah. To push your narrative. It's almost yeah. like there's yeah. somebody working in the BBC yeah. press office who's like, you know what? I'm going to sneak this picture in so no, people no. Can, can actually no, see it. I, what I don't think they, this was I, the least violent yeah. picture they had. <laughs> they probably had nothing better to work with. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it seems to be a common theme that riots are justified if a violent criminal has been killed, but not if innocent kids have. But even as the media strain to show the narrative of far-right thugs and find footage of nice community leaders helping the police, so if we move on to the next thing, they got some nice shots of uh, of people handing out um, handing out donuts or whatever to the oh. police. And it is, man, it, it, what this guy's doing is is very nice. You know, I think honestly, I think a lot of I think a lot there's a lot of hysteria on both sides with with this, and I think a a lot of um, a lot of Muslims are uh, absolutely. You know, capable of assimilating and integrating, but I think the government is actually stopping it happening by having them treated as a separate community. It's like everybody's got to be British if we're if we're going to have a co cohesive society where everybody gets on. We don't have these these sort of uh, ethnic rivalries and conflicts and stuff. Then 
uh, you know, we've got to have everybody harmonious and treated equally. That guy on um, the right really doesn't need one of those, though, does he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Consider as well if this was a white woman trying to give them ice pops that she would be arrested. <laughs> Good, point. Yeah. Good point. You got a license. Um, so, yeah, uh, if we move on, this is uh, it's interesting because the media, even though they're trying to push this far right thuggery uh, narrative, they couldn't help but accidentally reveal the truth. Have a look at this. And, and look very pleased about it whilst they do it, did it. Then there was this, as I say, clash between protesters and the police, and that is when they then ran off across the park. Nice machetes, here. bros. Um, a big group <laughs> ran off um, looking for trouble, it looked like, to us. So we're just oh, yeah. going to step away now from this group behind oh, us. But, are you? Um, a lot of disorder <laughs> here, a lot of. Was that, was that a post that had been ripped out yeah, of the yeah, pavement? Yeah. yeah, something like that. It was a bit, yeah. bit more substantial than a car radio. But just like, we're just going to step away. It's like, yeah, I bet you are. I <laughs> yeah, bet you yeah, are. Because yeah. you're a racist. None, thank, yeah. God none of them were, <laughs> thank God none of them were holding safety scissors, because otherwise yeah. they'd be in big trouble. <laughs> Bro didn't have his spork today. And there's, <laughs> and there's that hilarious video where the Sky reporter is uh, is is telling people um, you know what? What terrible things the far right thugs, which you didn't actually materialise, but what terrible far right thugs we've got uh, has has some people walking up behind her. Let's have a look at this. Oh no, I think it is this clip. I think it is this. Clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, let me. It yeah, rumours the far right were coming. Oh, that's the somebody with a sword. Now under pressure oh, yeah, to explain mm. why they didn't do anything to stop people scandal. who were clearly armed. Responsible sword. Yeah. yeah. A group then went on to attack a man at a pub, punching and kicking him. He's white, it's fine. That's yeah. why they're doing The violence yeah. was sudden and shocking for those who were watching on. The ones Go who were doing hit the him initially he's like, all right, lads, door, calm down. Crack the glass over there. If we move on to the next video, I think I, the next I, one is the... Yeah, this is the, this is the Sky Reporter. Um, Sky Reporter talking. I mean, this is, I'm sure everybody's seen this, but it's so good. Community leaders have been speaking to the police as well because. Hey, yo, free Palestine! <laughs> free Palestine! <laughs> Fuck India, mate! But I think, apologies for the language you're hearing, but a sense of the uh, anger, I think you can Casey. hear there. Yeah, Casey, I think we. Becky, I apologise. We uh, need to. Um, <laughs> Get the hell out, out of there! there. Stop Get that. the hell out of there! We can stop that there. But it's interesting. I, they, went, they went, apparently, a rumour a rumor spread uh, that we, they're, they're far right thugs going to yeah. turn up in Birmingham and, yeah. uh, and it was spread by by you know people on the left it was spread by community leaders and obviously it was bollocks I don't know why these people aren't aren't getting um, arrested for spreading for spreading that rumour and so the media turned up to get footage of the far right thugs being horrible and the you know the mobs and Muslims turned up to fight the far right thugs and in the end there were no far right thugs so the, me the media but it was just quite got scary footage. for the media mm. yeah the media just got footage of, uh, of Muslims doing stuff but what's interesting is they still tried to spin it so this is um this is one of those men uh, trying to slash the tires on the Sky News Cruise vehicle. Let's have a look at this. Do not mind him. He's seen us. No, no, no. He's gonna, he's gonna see us. He's gonna do the same to us. So there he is, stabbing. He didn't actually successfully slash the slash the tire. No, but um, these are the people they're speaking in defense of at this point. Yeah. Look how it was reported. Yeah. So this is Sky just themselves. Protesters. Just protesters. Just warning. So protesters surround, which obviously... Could you have know, been any protesters. All the, all the protesters <laughs> that people have been talking about, you're going to assume that's, you know, these far-right far right thugs. So protesters surround Sky correspondent and slash tire amid unrest. And it's like, there's no mention of the fact that, you know, he's not, you know, one of the far right thugs. Um, it's absolutely ridiculous. Anybody reading that would just, you know, assume. Yep, yep. And that's, that's and they the, know it. They know it. They know that it's, it's lie by omission. That's it's a all deliberate obfuscation. It's disgusting. So, um, so yeah, they left out every every possible detail. And for anyone nostalgic for coverage of the BLM riots, uh, the BBC brought back the classic Simple phrase time. "largely peaceful." Uh, and look at how uh, well, yeah, we can we can watch it here. This is the the BBC. This evening, several vehicles in a pub have been attacked by a group of Muslim youths, following false reports that far right protesters plan to march through the area. And we heard a little earlier from our correspondent there, Phil Mackey. There were speculation that there was a planned far-right protest through that 
the, uh, area this evening. It turned out to be false information, but nonetheless, hundreds of people turned up, many of them wearing masks, some of them carrying weapons, as you saw. But it was a largely peaceful demonstration. I was there for several hours, but then uh, a group of masked youths began behaving in sort of low-level criminal behavior, I can't um, believe it. reckless driving, antisocial behavior. <clears throat> what happened in the past hour or so is that they'd broken off, and uh, a group of them had attacked cars and a pub elsewhere in the city. Uh, I've just come off the phone to the police. They said they're investigating several cases of criminal damage, one of assault, one of carrying an offensive weapon. And the MP for Birmingham Yardley, in whose constituency, that is Jess Phillips, has just posted on X. She said the people in Yardley are scared tonight. We have directed police to all locations of violence we're hearing about. Any acts of violence will not be tolerated. The good news, Sophie, is that the police say that that group of young Muslim masked youths has now dispersed, and it seems that things are beginning to calm down. That's it. Don't worry about it, guys. Dispersed. They've finally <laughs> dispersed <laughs> after smashing up a bunch of cars and pubs and restaurants. And yeah, Jess Phillips, so the local MP, yeah. who actually almost lost her seat. She only scraped yeah. in by, I think, you know, 600 votes. And she who got intimidated by that community. Had her, had her the, the tires on the cars of her yep. uh, leafleters and canvassers slashed. Uh, she, and she came out. She always came out making excuses for them when they heckled her when she was accepting her yeah, yeah, yeah. accepting her uh, candidacy or accepting the the win and the vote. Uh, she said, uh, "I don't think the I don't think they're doing it because they're Muslim. They're doing it because they're men." And oh, it's like, well, <laughs> that's yeah. it. Were there, there were there Quaker men in yeah. there? Were there yeah. were there Amish men? Oh, how does she know? <laughs> Just the oil. It's a hell of an assumption. Yeah, and she yeah. came out to excuse this as well. She said. These people came to this location because it has been spread that racists were coming to attack them. This mis misinformation was spread entirely to create this content. So oh, it's it would fine. be justifiable if the racists had turned up. Yeah, if they turned up, they'd be like, oh no, it's fine. They're just killing racists. Don't worry yeah. about it. And also going going out to fight people. That's still going out to fight people. Yeah. You know what You're I mean? Carrying it's massive swords and machetes. That's not allowed. Yeah, it's ri it's ridiculous. And uh, let's look at how the BBC reported on this car getting attacked and getting its windows smashed in by a mob of Muslims carrying Palestinian flags. Smashing up the people's cars. People are running. It's, it's, it's an English guy in there. Probably a racist. Yeah. No yeah. doubt. Was he a white Englishman? Well, he's far right. Yeah. So yeah, basically, let's see how that was reported in the the BBC. That was a that was a mob of yeah. Muslim men smashing up a car that had white people inside it. Asian men. So BMW set upon and Asian men inside attacked. How violence surged in one UK city. So they've completely flipped the truth. They've completely flipped the truth. Yeah, it's yeah. Asian men attacking white men in a car. Yeah, yeah, absolutely insane. Oh, but BBC Verify are on it. Well, you can they're trust well them. known for being honest. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're very reliable. Carl would know. Yeah, I would personally know. <laughs> yeah, going back to Totnes again. Yeah, honestly, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's something about being uh, child abusers that makes you lie about things that happened. Uh, and when a rumour went round that the EDL... Uh, hey, 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 there's also friends of child abusers staffing the BBC. They're not all child <laughs> That's abusers. That's true. That's true. Some of them just fund them. Uh, and when a rumour went round that the EDL were planning demonstrations, leftists and Muslims came out onto the streets to counter-protest. This was a couple of nights ago, when no EDL turned up, probably because yeah. they don't exist. They were disbanded, I think, in 2013. The armed far-left thugs and Muslims rioted. They chased a police van down the street in Sheffield, uh, and they and they trashed shops. But the media covered it as anti-hate marchers <laughs> face down far-right thugs. Uh, that's in the Daily Mail. So yeah, if you can't if you can't afford the Guardian, you might as well get the Daily Mail. It's the same thing, isn't it? Isn't it amazing how like the Daily Express and the Daily Mail that are meant to be far right publications yeah. suddenly flip to the Guardian's narrative, yeah. which is just the most far left and publication. The, the, the Times is supposed to be what a centre right publication, yeah. and their their uh, headline was the exact same yeah. except for one word as yeah. the Guardian. The, this is the government All with the same photo. The, the government have absolutely orchestrated this. Yeah. And uh, almost all UK. Well, yeah, this is this is some of the rioting that we that we saw. This was this was the people who came out to to fight against the far right thugs. Let's have a look at what they're doing. This is this is what fighting Welcome fascism team. looks Why like. Why are trashing the place? This is the only place in England today I've seen getting trashed. 
Even the guy Take filming. Take that EDL. <laughs> EDL yeah. rubbish. There were um, EDL particles in the air that yeah, needed to be shown. These EDL boxes and bin bags need to really be getting a kicking. What are you doing? So the left shared misinformation. Yes. It started by, by you know, Hope Not Hate shared it and it is, it is ridiculous. There's going to be a hundred far right protests and then all the lefties come out in the streets. Then then there's rioting from them. There's death threats and all the rest of it. Uh, that guy saying, slash the throats. Uh, so, so they rioted. They, they shared misinformation, which is bad. Then they rioted, which is bad. They made death threats, which is bad. Mm -hmm. So why is the media kiss, kissing their arse? Uh, this is, uh, well, obviously, because almost all UK broadcasters are staffed entirely by effete liberal milk toasts and thrall to wokeism. So they're incapable of running a story that contradicts any of the sort of mantras of wokeism, such as diversity equals strength. Because this is like, you know, it's, it's, it's like in the 17th century with the, the Catholics, when, you know, Galileo suggested yeah, that yeah. maybe the earth re revolves around the sun instead of the sun revolving around the earth. Uh, this is, you know, this is the same I sort think of level. Was Copernicus, wasn't it? Oh yeah, Copernicus. I, I was Sorry, very, don't worry. I was very young at the time. So, <laughs> uh, journalists such as Ian Dunn tweeted, "Riots work during BLM," but apparently this week's rioters, if we move on, uh, have no legitimate concerns. They're well. trying to start start a race war. They're doing the Nazi salute, and he's very quiet about people doing the Nazi salute when it's Palestinian protesters, right? And they're not trying to start a race war. People are gen This is what everybody keeps forgetting about. The left can't seem to comprehend that maybe people are genuinely very upset that children, British children, keep getting killed. Right, keep so getting killed. British people are like, oh, we need to keep our children safe. And the left are like, you're trying to start a race war. Yeah. This man that's, who that's is, an interesting response to that. Mm, this man know, who's not lost his publishing deals and no. still has books that you can get available in Liberal Waterstones. Yeah. yeah. And as well as two-tier reporting of the protest, the media didn't exactly hold the government's feet over the fire. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, is, I'm, know, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm not saying Britain is run by an incestuous cabal of elites, uh, but the Home Secretary, when she really needed to be asked some tough questions, was interviewed on TV by her own husband, Ed Balls. Let's have a look at this. Can I ask, um, because we've talked about this a few times in uh, the last the uh, few days, like many of our <laughs> viewers will have done at home, uh, since those terrible killings in Southport, there have been identifiable individuals on social media who have been inciting not just riot, but violence. They've been using racist language. They've been using falsehoods about what happened in Southport. This is, uh, this is happening on the social media platforms. What can be done, what should be done now by the social media companies and the police and the government to stop this happening? Because it's been happening for a week. Darling. Well, you're <laughs> right, Ed, that we have seen days, uh, the, uh, what things that are appearing online that are clearly criminal, that social media has put rocket boosters under the far-right extremist organisation and also some of the violence that we have seen organising some of the violence. Things that are criminal offline are also criminal online. So we also expect the police to be pursuing uh, criminality, illegal material that is online and to make sure that they also face the full force of the law. And there's also an issue about social media companies here. They have to take much greater responsibility for what now. is happening yeah. on their platforms that, but, frankly, so yeah, they we, make we huge amounts that. of money from. But yeah, it's obviously pre-prepared softball questions. Yeah. She's lobbed at her. She's got the answer ready because it's her husband. She yeah. knows. She's told him what to ask. It's and really also, you need to pick up the kids at four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and right. Even then, she's fish fingers yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Even then, she stumbled a bit to begin with because yeah. these people are stupid and yeah. rubbish. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. I think politicians in the UK know, like, it's very difficult to become a politician because you can't have any anything. You can't have tweeted anything funny about uh, Estonians or anything like that. You'll get you need lots to of, have at least lots of three trouble. child you victims. Yeah, you got to you got to be you got to be completely clean history. You've got to be somebody who's willing to put up with a lot of abuse and grief for relatively little money. Uh, if you work in finance or whatever, like said, you Javi took a ninety eight percent pay cut to become a politician. Um, so this is why we get rubbish politicians. You know what I mean? We need to yeah. we need to make it so you know you maybe not you can make more money, but we oh, it I've needs to be idea. a more attractive pr I've prospect. Got an idea. Right. So I think that politicians each MP should get a million pound a year. Yeah, like in Singapore. But also they should get a flogging a year. Right? <laughs> so there's just five lashes every single year. But you get your million pounds. Yeah. So you get good money. And we know that the people who are like, yeah, I just want to do it for the status or because, you know, I just want to be, you know, interested. No, 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 no. You're going to have to 
pay for it. You know yeah. what I mean? You, and then that will really get competent and engaged people. Be like, okay, I'll take the flogging, but I have to do this. Yeah. But then you're also going to get, I mean, I think most MPs at the moment actually pay somebody £250 to flog them on a Tuesday. <laughs> so... <laughs> Your point. Yeah, the incentive. Maybe, it's, yeah, right maybe it is a wrong incentive. I, I, I disagree somewhat because I, I am still going through the grand sexual blackmail theory of politics, which is one of the <laughs> first things that they need to know is that you are easy to blackmail. Yeah. yeah, you need to be on somebody's little black book somewhere, yeah. knowing that they've got footage of you doing something wrong. The Epstein theory. Yes, and, and I think. It's got a pretty much 100% success rate so far, as yeah, far as I'm yeah. concerned. I hope you appreciated that segment from the podcast The Lotus Eaters. And if you want to see what else we're doing, you can follow Dan's series, Brokenomics, where he talks about broken systems. And if you want to see all the other work that we're putting out, and you don't want to miss anything, you can follow us on Twitter. And we always post links to all of the work we're putting out, so you don't miss a single thing. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.